is not going to be your normal accessibility talk. I'm not going to sit here and worry with you about alternate text. Um, what I do want to talk about is what is accessibility to Yahoo, how do we approach it, and give you some ideas of things you can hack on, some cool stuff to work on. So what is accessibility? You know, the easiest way to understand what accessibility is to Yahoo is to watch this movie. Uh, it's about a guy in a wheelchair who mastered the first level of that film. Yes, what? Let's build it once, and let's build it equally for everybody. 
a lot of money in that actually for web pages or physical stores. And uh, we're seeing uh, more and more designers and architects thinking about that. It really does belong to the web world. So who makes things that are accessible? Why is it that some things are good, some things are bad? There's an attorney in uh, the San Francisco area. Her name is Lane Feinkel. Lane Feinkel. She, she's an attorney that goes to places like Target or goes to Walmart or goes to banks. And instead of saying, we're going to sue you if you don't fix that, she goes up and she says, look, you have a problem here. People that are blind want to buy from your store. But when they get to the cash register, they can't use your thing to run your ATM card or their debit card because there's no braille, there's no uh, auto feedback. So if they want to buy something, they have to tell the person what their password is. We don't want that to happen. So here's how we can help you. And so they find a one is saying, we're, we're willing to work with you to help you solve these problems that everybody knows about. She's done an amazing her and her group have done an amazing amount of work behind the scenes to fix that. But she says that part of making things accessible is you need two people. You need an advocate and you need a, uh, a champion. Now, advocates are people that they are not going to put up with an inaccessible situation. Uh, this is one of the guys from the original wheelchair road between. Um, you know, these are people that say, look, you've got a store and I can't get my wheelchair into that store. Um, not only am I not going to support you, but I'm going to tell my friends not to support you. And I'm going to demand that you make it so that I can actually use my wheelchair inside your store. The other people that we have are champions. And champions are the ones that make things happen. This could be engineers. It could be uh, CEOs of a company. Um, it could be designers that say, hey, you know, if I do this something slightly different, I can make this work. And it's the people that feel those bugs that get filed that actually fix the problems. Now, the good thing about us is that we're the champions. We're the ones at this hack event that are going to be building the applications that are going to make things life, make life a lot easier for people. You may be building something that you think is really cool, and you may not realize it's going to be accessible, uh, that it could be used for some completely different purpose. Or you could be building something, and you don't realize that it just takes a little bit more work to make it accessible. Let's say you're building an iPhone application today. Can you make sure that you add those new extra steps to make sure that that iPhone application is accessible to everyone? So I want to talk just a wee bit about how you make things accessible. I mentioned that I was going to talk about all attributes for 30 minutes, and I did lie a little bit. I am going to talk about all attributes. Um, all attributes are whenever you put an image on a web page, there is an attribute called alt, alt equals, and then you put text in there. That text should describe the image. I'm going to play a little snippet of what it sounds like when you don't. But let me show you uh, this is Lady Gaga at the Grammys. We have a headline that says Lady Gaga stunts the Grammys. We need to be able to describe that image. Here's a very good alt text. It says Lady Gaga performs more in this way while emerging from a large egg shaped pot. It describes that image. The headline still says Lady Gaga stunts the Grammys. So if I'm a blind user, I get the headline, and I don't know what that was. Well, how did she stun the grammys? Well, the alternate text describes that image, and it makes it very clear. Let me show you what it sounds like when it's not done. Search results. Heading level from leg. Lady Gaga Brat. YouTube. Bloomberg. Leg. HTTP. Slash slash. L. Dot Y. N. G. Dot com. Slash 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 Lady Gaga, the mother leg, full story. List one item, level two, bullet. Leg, one end of list. Heading level five, two items. Lady Gaga, photo. List six items, leg. HTTP, slash slash, tsum.fm.bit.net, slash images, slash, thumbnail. Ask me next question, Q. Equals 4 0 3 3 0 0 3 6 3 5 4 7. And equals 6 8 2 9 6 9 8 1 4 8 1 8 1 2 8 1 6 5 3 1 8 8 9 1 2 4. Leg, HTTP. Slash slash t dot soon dot fm dot bit dot net slash g slash thumbnail dot ask me next question q equals four to six five two zero five five nine nine and then equals one six four six nine nine two. What you're hearing is that when you don't have any alternate text on an image, the screen reader has to give the user some feedback as to what they're going to be looking at, so it tells you the location of the image. So in this one, we had the search result page on Yahoo Search, and they didn't they didn't use the alternate text correctly. So every time.
someone was blind went to do a search result, they had to parse through dozens of images with these extremely long URLs. Now, a lot of people might think, hey, well, I don't have a good alternate text in this image. I'm just going to use alt equals blank, alt equals quote, quote, nothing in there. That works fine if it's a decorative image. But don't use it when the image is the only thing within a link. Because the screen reader is going to get something that says link, and then it's going to tell you the location of the image. Um, so always use alt equals, quote, quote, something in every image that you put in a web page. If the image is the only thing that sits within a link, you need to describe what that link is going to do. So it could be alt equals, uh, click on this image to find uh, more information about the big dog and the content head of the brand. Something that describes what that link is going to do. Now another problem we have, this also came from a Yahoo page, is where you use it the wrong item. So this came from a sign up page, and we had a button to sign in, which is great. A button should be an action. But then they had a link to cancel the form. A link should take you to another page. So if you're building a form and you're using sign in, cancel, they should both be buttons. What happens when a screen reader user is they, they get told that this is a link or this is a button. Um, if it's a button, they know it's going to be an action. If it's a link, it tells them where it's going to go. And if where they're going to go is it's like a pound sign or it's a JavaScript link, that's not really helpful. Uh, the other nice thing about using buttons is that it, a link for these things with JavaScript is you don't have to cancel. You, know, you don't have to say, you know, stop the uh, link process. Another thing that really helps us with uh, accessibility is when we have data tables. For instance, I have a data table. I hope I have these things correct. I'm just trying to think about um, some Romanian foods. Now, a data table can have what we use as a TH at the very top. The top row is your table headers. And you see an attribute called scope. Now, what scope means is that this table header is going to describe everything. It says scope equals call. So, name is going to describe everything underneath it. Um, I would have the same thing for type, it would describe everything underneath it, and the same for taste. Now, you can see also that there's one called TH scope equals row. So, that one describes the data that's on the side. If I'm a, a screen reader user and I come to this data table and there's no headers, then basically I have to memorize, I have to kind of think to myself, hey, this is the first row, the second column is going to be about type, third column is going to be about When I get down to uh, this thing, imagine being a screen reader user, you've gone through all these things and it's just saying words. You've got to kind of try to remember, what well, was that last column? If you use this TH scope, you throw a column, it will say, right here, it will say, Toba, if I said that correctly, taste pork sausage. So the screen reader will actually tell the person what are the headers associated with that data. It's very simple for you guys to implement. It's a huge difference for people that need it. One last basic HTML stuff. Whenever you have a form or you have an input, please put a label on it. Now it's good two things. For the average person, when you have a label, then you click on that label activates the input, which is really nice for more radio buttons. Yeah, that form, you have to try to kind of like put your mouse on the radio button. You have this big long stretch of text. It's much easier to just click on the text and it activates the radio button. Very simple stuff. Now let's get to something a little bit more. Accessibility is not very sexy. ARIA is pretty sexy. ARIA is uh, Accessible Rich Internet Applications. What this means is that we're saying, hey, Web 2.0 guys, we're building some cool stuff, but it doesn't work with screen readers. Uh, we're taking a web environment, which is documents, and we're trying to turn it into all these applications, and there's really no correlation. So let's use a few little bits of HTML, some attributes, some ideas. And when a screen reader comes to this thing, let's say it's a, uh, a tab view, it has four tabs, and in each tab, you can see like a box. Let's let them think that this is no longer a web page, but it's actually a native application like Outlook or like Word or something like that. Let's make them 
get the same kind of feedback. So you have the same kind of key commands, the same kind of arrows, the same kind of tab instruction. You can use our argument today. Um, we have things called landmarks where you basically just put something like role equals search on your search form. Role equals main on the main section of your body of the, of the page. What's cool about this is that the user, you know, we have those skipped main contents. They actually can then skip to any part of the page when you have these roles. Um, you can have function role equals button. Let's say you have a web page and you have tons of those links that are doing things like canceling the form. At least put role equals button on that link. That will tell the screenwriter, hey, this is not a link, it's actually a button. It makes a big difference. We can actually use aria dash something like aria-label, that allows us to put a label on an input without actually having it visually uh, part of the page. So if you have a bunch of uh, forms that have inputs with no labels and you don't have a, you know, a, a visual description of it, you can actually just put that attribute on the input and it works. And you can even do states like the aria invalid equals true. Let's say that someone submitted a form and something was wrong. When you reload that page, you can add aria invalid equals true, and then the screener will know this is the input that's broken. They don't have to sit there and try to find it. So let's look at an application that has really good aria support. Hi, I'm Victor Tsar from the Yahoo Accessibility Lab, and today I'd like to share a new feature from Yahoo called Direct Search. It's currently in beta, but it's got some interesting accessibility features that I think you should uh, see and try out for yourself. Um, one of the things that, that sets it apart from other search engines is the fact that we speak results automatically as you type them into the search field. And if you use a screen reader, you will hear those suggestions spoken back to you as you type. For example, in this instance, if I'm going to type something like San Francisco, you will hear um, screen reader speak back the related content as well as search suggestions to you. So let's try it out. S and and ten suggestions. Sorry, and on and and C O ten suggestions. San Francisco. C A L M O seven A M. B S D. Current local times operating things to do one. Golden Gate Bridge two. Alcatraz Island three. Japanese tea gardens San Francisco and new hotels restaurant guys. So at this uh, point, I have several options here. I can either listen to the rest of the relevant content, press Control key to shut up on screen reader. I also have a shortcut key. In this case, it's grave accent or tilde key, uh, which is the, depending on which browser you're using, it will be either Alt Shift tilde or Control tilde. It's an access key. You can switch between the content panel, so this is my friend. like this, and you can start reading the content. Current local time. How to nest taking level 2 top rating things to do. List of three items clearly only one. Golden Gate Bridge. So you can hear, you can continue reading the relevant content. You can also press uh, the tilde access key search query enough. to jump back to the search query and review other search suggestions that are available to you. Let's see, let's see what else is available here. San Francisco. Great system press. San Francisco Giants. San Francisco Giants, 18 to 16. Send a dead on West Sunday. May 8th, W320 ES Colorado. We catch you dead. May 10th, 1015 PM, ETS Arizona. New schools and schedule sites. Arizona. Arizona. So what you notice is that as I arrow to the search suggestion, uh, the Yahoo search also fetches the relevant content. So again, I can use the tilde access key to move back into the content panel and read the scores for San Francisco Giants. I can such as in my friend. Like this, I can read this, I can move back to the search field search query and look at other search suggestions. And again, you will notice as I move with up and down arrow keys, the relevant content is being read automatically back to me. San Francisco Point, San Francisco 49ers, San Francisco 49 San Francisco State University, San Francisco State University official site of San Francisco State, San Francisco Airport, SFO, San Francisco International. So again, this is the airport information. San Francisco to San Francisco to top sites, San Francisco, San Francisco weather. Weather San Francisco. C8 today, sunny 60, deck one death, 49, deck one death, tomorrow sunny 66, deck one death, 50, deck one death. So again, you can go in and review the weather. So if you want to 
able to explore the new screen reader. How can this physical three items go into that? Click it inside. One of the things I want to do is take one day, 49, take one day. If you did the same kind of search on Google or Bing or another one, even the Yahoo Homes page, we don't have this on there yet. Visually, you would see all these things happening, but the screen reader wouldn't know. And you would basically, they would be doing the searches, they wouldn't have access to all that technical information. The other thing is the navigation, the ability to use your keyboard, even those arrow keys to go up and down to be able to use the shortcuts. That works for people without screen. So it's much more helpful for people that don't use the mouse all the time. And there are a lot of people that just can't use the mouse. So uh, ARIA is a series of things that we do to control tab focus to allow um, that kind of native environment feel. Uh, we're going to be working on something, uh, a book about ARIA, advanced ARIA. I'm going to put it in the automobile, uh, the one that's in beta right now. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great thing to learn. If you go to search.yahoo.com, you can try search directly right now. I also want to show you an example of something using an iPhone that is really bad. And unfortunately, it's too common. So this is one of the big apps on the iPhone. In this case, it's going to look in the southwest app, uh, which uh, should allow me to go buy tickets or show my flights and whatnot. So I'm going to just do a couple of flicks left and right to see where I can actually do this app. Basically, for someone that has cognitive problems, you're there to teach them. 
deficit disorder, and they're trying to read an article, but they keep getting distracted by all these other elements. This is the kind of tool that strips away all of them. And what if you had an article that was very complex, but you had some kind of tool that could simplify it to give a summary of the article? So someone that doesn't have a college-level education can still understand that article about uh, politics. This is a really cool phone. Um, so imagine that you have a, a parent that has Alzheimer's, or you have someone with a serious cognitive disability, they need to call the paramedics. All they have to do is press the button next to one of those icons. This would be perfect for an iPhone or for an Android. You basically have your contact list. And if you give this phone to someone that you use like a grandparent or something like that, and you pre-populate that contact list with 10 people, all they have to do is look at a person, of their face, press the button, and calls them. Really simple app, but great for you. Memory loss. So once again, with Alzheimer's, can you think of an application that lets people try to, you know, kind of quiz them, keeps their mind active? with uh, senility and such, so that they can remember those people in their family. Uh, some kind of like a uh, slideshow or something. There's really a lot of that can be done. A lot of the world is based on uh, non-visual blind users. So look at this complex financial data table. Can you translate that into a few lines of text? So that someone comes to this, they can actually get an understanding of how the stock is going up and down. Was it dramatic or was it fairly stable? There's a tool called Universal Subtitles. And that's what we're going to write. They can create a tool that allows people to do uh, audio descriptions. So watch this little video to see what an audio description is. So imagine that you can build this uh, application. Someone loads a video, and then you give them a tool, and they can actually start adding audio descriptions to it. I think that'd be pretty darn cool. Uh, Universal subtitles does that. We can actually add closed captioning in the video. Uh, if you have an iPad, a lot of people use this program called Ted, uh, Flipboard, which basically grabs your Flickr stream, your Twitter stream, your Facebook stream, and then it grabs the articles that your friends are sharing, and then it expands them. So you have like a magazine see all those articles that your friends are sharing. Now what if you could take that concept and use the uh, native text-to-speech engine? So when you get in the car in the morning, you've got to drive to work. Instead of listening to the radio, you could actually be listening to the articles that your friends share on Twitter the night before. Uh, directions, how can you describe directions when someone cannot visually see a map? How can they get an idea of where they are right now and what's 60 feet in front of them, what's a uh, mile in front of them? Or where do they park the car? Well, maybe they're fine they're not driving, but they're with someone. This has happened to me a few times. Where we get out and we're trying to figure out where we park, it'd be nice to be able to say, okay, I'm here, click a button, five hours later I can go back to that button and I can you know, go back to where I park. Uh, there's some cool death hacks. Like a sound detector, a uh, fire alarm goes off, you have an application on your phone that recognizes the fire alarm and starts vibrating. Someone that's deaf is not going to hear that fire alarm. Uh, deaf Twitter, a lot of people use uh, Twitter that are deaf. What if they did some sign language, recorded a short video in your tool, uploaded it to Flickr, just like you share uh, photos and everything else? People with physical disabilities also need something. I want to show you a hack that started at Yahoo, which basically imagine you cannot move anything. All you can maybe move is blink an eye. How
how would you be able to use the internet? We would have this thing, it's like a keyboard that goes up, and you have to basically scroll through the keyboard, but it's really difficult to move the cursor around the page. So we created this project that's basically going to take the page and it's going to break it into sections. So I basically, by pressing the space button or any kind of trigger, I can have it go through the page by columns. And now it's going to say, I want that section, so I'm going to, it looks a little confusing, but I'm just having a hard time trying to that work. So now it's going down here, and it's going here, and now I'm able to cruise through this area. I got to a link I wanted, I can now hit click. So someone that cannot move anything but make one finger, instead of having to sit there and get this mouse to move around, they can actually move one finger, they can actually go through the web page, drill down to the section they want. Um, and then they can go to this section and start the video. We also have people that are perfectly intelligent but physically cannot talk, uh, especially with cerebral palsy. So a lot of people have been building applications for the iPad where um, they can actually, like, there's several of them that have been built by parents for their children. So the children are able to actually quickly go through these menus and find the words they want. And then they can, with their iPad, they can go up to a restaurant and say, I want a cheeseburger. Whereas they can't actually speak it, but they get their iPad speaking. This is a really big field that a lot of people are doing uh, for their own children and for their family. I'm kind of hurrying it up because I'm running short on time. Uh, another thing that's really cool is social networks. If I have a person that's physically disabled, how do their parents, their doctors, their teachers communicate with each other through a, a private social network? So to summarize, if it isn't broke, fix it anyways. Sometimes you're going to build stuff and you're building an application that you think is going to do one thing but might do a lot more uh, that you never expect. Um, Think about what if, uh, what if I couldn't move anything but a finger, what if I couldn't see the difference between red and green, what if I can't remember the beginning of an article? Start thinking about these what if situations and then try to fix the problems. And remember you're the champions, you guys are the ones that are going to be fixing the problems that other people uh, experience. We have a web page, accessibility.gov.com, where we share all sorts of information about accessibility. And at accessibility.yahoo.com slash library is where we keep all of the code, like HTML, PHP, CSS, JavaScript, and direction, including more information on our end. So thank you very much. These are the accessibility innovations and challenges. I hope to see more. Please feel free to come up to me throughout the day uh, with any questions. Um, coming up with Rob, we'll be talking about BOSS, and uh, we're going to switch that over right now.